arcade machine in my room, but that only takes up like this much space. I can't imagine how you would get a hot tub in there. And like, what do you do? How do you fill it up? Coming to you pre-taped from the Best Coast Show Studios. This is the Best Coast Show. I am your host, Albert Aguilera. That is my producer, Curtis Stage. Curtis, they, they got some life back. USC, maybe they're back in action. Uh, get a new coach, play better. This happens. Uh, today on the show, we're going to talk about USC versus Utah, the big win that put USC back on the college football map. Uh, USC still outside the top 25. Is that right? Cameron Smith, incredible performance. We got to talk about him. UCLA beat Cal two weeks ago and is a good position to win the Pac 12 South. We got to talk about Josh Rosen's jacuzzi, but first we got to talk about Stupid College Athletes of the Week. Stupid College Athletes of the Week, guys. Uh, every week we talk about it. Keep your hands to yourself. Don't have firearms. Uh, this week it's uh, it's no different. Uh, we had Alti Tempany, uh, running back over at Nicole State, former running back at Alabama, former running back at UNLV. Trouble seems to follow this guy everywhere. Goes out into the highway, stops cars from crossing, and then discharges a firearm into the air. <laughs> why do you need a gun? It's 4 o'clock in well, the morning. Well, first why of all, you... why is he stopping the freeway? Exactly. It's 4 o'clock in the morning. What the hell are you doing on the freeway or the highway, whatever they call it? Yeah. Why are Wait, you well, out where's there? Where's Nichols State? Do we even no know idea. where Nichols State is? I have is? no clue where Nichols okay. State is. So he's gone way down in his college I mean, career. you were a running back at Alabama, yeah. one of the best programs in the country. And then he leaves the team. Goes to UNLV, gets dismissed from UNLV. If you get ends dismissed up from U, State. well, hold on a second. If you get dismissed from UNLV, that's pretty bad. That is pretty bad because <laughs> I think they probably let a lot slide there. But why? Why do you? Why are you? It's four o'clock in the morning. Why are you out on the highway stopping cars and discharging a gun? That's that's really dumb. Yeah, I mean, he was I just shooting it up into the air. It was just yeah, kind of like bang, he, bang, it was bang. A single, like, no, it was a single, single one shot and off into the air. Did somebody see it? Probably. I mean, someone how did, heard it. Uh, oh. Apparently, someone heard it. Reported it. The cops showed up and he admitted to, "Hey, I've discharged my my weapon once." The cops found the gun in his waistband and then arrested him. <laughs> Was All right, but uh, <laughs> now going over to North Carolina, University of North Carolina, Seward and Hughes, this is the combo. Both their cornerbacks got suspended and arrested for uh, assaulting a guy. They beat up this guy. They punched him in the face repeatedly. They broke his nose. They rendered him unconscious. And I don't, I don't know what led to these guys beating up some other dude. And running well, at houses. least it wasn't sexual assault. Well, it was just, yeah, it was regular assault. assault regular battery. assault. Yeah, this week we had no sexual assault. Good job, college athletes. Keep your hands to yourselves. Um, yeah. But... I, it's an improvement, I guess. I like how it's two dudes that are both on the defense working together, but just for the wrong reasons. <laughs> Correct. <laughs> so uh, they're working together. Apply the teamwork on the field, guys. <laughs> yeah. Why is the teamwork happening in a bar or in a dorm room or wherever they're at? Uh, guys, it, it's don't be out late. Why are you out late? There's only trouble that happens after 2 a.m. Just stay at home. Yeah. Yeah, study. Do something. They're not studying. They're not studying. But I think, yeah, yeah. Th keep your hands to yourself like we say every week. They've kept their hands off the girls this week, so that's good. And firearms. Don't, why do you need firearms? Yeah. Like, you're a college athlete. I mean, if you have a firearm because you like hunting and all that stuff, cool. Leave it at home. Leave it in the dorm room. Don't discharge it. Stop shooting at buildings. Stop shooting it in the highway. What is wrong with you guys? Yeah. Terrible. All right. Let's talk about USC. I mean, this was a great win last week. They finally started looking like the team that we are expecting this team to look like. And they beat a Utah team that was ranked third in the nation, played a solid game top to bottom. Their defense finally looked good again. But this was just a great game. Yeah, top to bottom, USC played a great game. When USC plays like this, they are the best team in the country. When their offense is clicking, they are the best team in the country. They go out. Uh, Utah came in. They hadn't won a game in Los Angeles in literally 100 years since, uh, was it 1916? 1916. Okay, so 99 years. And it's the first time in the history of rankings that a team ranked third or higher was an underdog to an unranked team because they were um, plus six and a half against USC. They go in, they get destroyed. Uh, so Vegas knew something. Yeah, Vegas knew something was up. They didn't know it was going to be that big of a win. Right, but, they knew something. but it's... did. This game, it's like, why do the Trojans play better for their temp coaches than they do for their head coaches? I don't know. They, you know, against the defense Notre was there all day. It was. And, and Notre Dame, they played well in the first half, didn't play well in the second half. They kind of ran out of steam there, and their defense kind of, you know, I think Notre Dame maybe made some adjustments or whatever, but Utah didn't make any adjustments. No, we were manhandling their O-line the entire time, and Cameron Smith, like you said it, this guy had three interceptions, <sighs> and they weren't 
they weren't interceptions on tip passes no. or you know a receiver you know, bobbled it and then he took it away from them. This dude read the quarterback, yeah, and they were three clean picks. He ran one back. This like it was one of the why best. Why aren't you like that every week? It was one of the best defense, and he's a true freshman. Yes, it was one of the best defensive performances I've ever seen in college football, maybe even in pro football. I mean, this was incredible. Yeah, he and was he there. Picks, he read everything. He exactly. was there every time. And then he, you know, the running back for the touchdown, and he did a great job there, avoiding tackles, running down the sideline on the one. I mean, it was a great performance, and I don't even think the kid knew how big his performance was. He just kind of looked. Like on the sidelines, he's like, ah, you know, here, you know, I'm just on. He got his helmet on. He wasn't high fiving people. People were coming up and slapping him, and he was like, kind of. Mm. Now, <laughs> and what was really great about this performance was it was an overall team effort because the defense showed up, yeah. and you didn't have Cody Kessler having to throw 400 yards. He he threw for one touchdown, ran for another. Juju had the touchdown, but the running backs, three running backs, had three touchdowns. Yeah, they so looked good. So it's like it was a, a a total team effort with this win, and I'm really hoping that they can keep this up because. Honestly, having three losses, USC is out of the title picture. They would need a ton of help to, to get back into the title. Oh, they're not going to get be, in. The, and yeah. be a, a top four team. I mean, they just beat the number three team in the country, and they're not even in the top 25 because they're only four and three. They didn't crack the top 25. And nor should they. I don't think they I, should be in the top 25. I thought they would have been maybe top 25, like 21, 23 or something in, in that area. But with three losses, you can't justify yeah. that. And at not least yet. now they're in a position to where they can still salvage uh, a Pac-12 South uh, a title so they can play possibly Stanford in a uh, Pac-12 championship game. Well, to win the Pac-12 South, they have to jump above. They have to win out. They, they have, to, have out. to finish with wins in every game from here on out. And they have to jump above UCLA. So that leads us to UCLA. They were off last week, but they beat Cal two weeks ago. And that was a great performance as well. Um you know, they were clicking in that game. Not that Cal's the best team, but Cal was ranked earlier in the season. And then they... They you, were, but then they ran into actual teams that play football. I yeah. mean, USC has Cal this week, so we'll see how, how that happens. But now UCLA, they did a great job. Um, unfortunately, you lose your your star running back, uh, Perkins, in, to a bad. knee injury. And he's not going to be playing this week either. He's had two weeks to recover. He left in the middle of the game. Mm -hmm. But uh, he was practicing this week, and they're like, nah, he can't even run all that well. So he's going to be out this week against Colorado. But do you really need him against Colorado? No, I don't, don't. Think, I don't I mean, think so. Rosen did a great job uh, in, in that week against Cal, and he threw for a UCLA record 34 completions. I found that hard to believe when I first heard it because I was like, really, 34 completions doesn't yeah. seem like a lot? 399 yards, too. He had a great game. Yeah, he did. And so this week, they're going to have to rely on him. Usually when, when uh, Rosen isn't doing all so well, they just, boom, they hand the ball to Perkins. Perkins runs it for 200 yards, and, and UCLA gets to do it. But this week that Perkins is not available, it's going to be more on Rosen, more on the defense that's been depleted for injuries. But I don't see Colorado giving them any trouble. Vegas has uh, UCLA favored minus 21. Yeah. So I, I don't see the, a reason why uh, UCLA shouldn't win this game. And really, their next three games, it's, who are they, they got Colorado, they have um, oh, Oregon, Oregon State, State and yeah. Washington State. They should go 3-0. and That shouldn't be a problem. Yeah. And then that fourth game would be Utah. And this is a chance for Rosen to start kind of clicking in that offense. that We ex we saw it at the start of the season. He's kind of fallen back down into kind of being a little confused on the offense. But now that, now that like you said, now that Perkins is out, this is where, where Rosen has a chance to kind of shine. Let's talk about Rosen a little bit because – he had a jacuzzi in his yes, dorm room. I was, I was just about to tell you that. Guys, for those of you who don't know, uh, Rosen had an inflatable hot tub in his dorm room, but UCLA made him get rid of it. If I'm Rosen and I have to carry this team for the rest of the season because Perkins can't perform uh, to his ability, and I'm the, the chosen one, I'm the golden child, <laughs> I'm the golden calf, and I'm going to lead us into a championship, I'm like, listen, I want my hot tub back. Don't take it away. Do you okay? Let's. There, there's some questions I have about this. Logistics. This, yeah. How? First of all, how big is the dorm room? Right. Yeah. How like, big is how dorm big room? is it? Is a jacuzzi for one? Is it like an after game? I got to get my body healed. Like or a, is this a party jacuzzi? No. Like, I mean, are, I've seen a, the ones at Big Five. These things are like eight, nine feet across. Yeah. And and that's just the like inner part of the, the tub, not including like the beefy part where the air goes and then the little heaters. How big? Is this dorm room, or did it take up his entire dorm room? And Which is awesome. How, what do you, wait, but, and then how do you get water in it, and how do you get the water out? And I think a concern, obviously, is if if you know they're partying in there and it pops, and then you flood the whole the whole you know, floor, floor, whatever. I mean, you know, I guess a case could be made for he's the he's the leader of the team. Let him have a jacuzzi, but I don't know if that's the kind of image if you want to. If he's wanna, winning, 
Let him do whatever he wants. <laughs> I mean, if, if UCLA were one, in, if they were one in six, I'd be like, listen, bro, get get rid of that. You can't be jackass. But right now that they're doing, I, well, they're five and two right now. They're going to go in. They, I expect them to win these next three games. They could be eight and two. I would be like, yeah, jacuzzi it up. He's a freshman, though, dude. I mean, he, he, that's bold to have a jacuzzi as a freshman. I've been thinking you're a junior or senior. You got a jacuzzi. The but ladies he's a are starting coming quarterback. over. He is. Assuming but. he wasn't, then again, I'd also say, bro, get that out of here. But he's a starting quarterback. You get me to, to 10 wins this year, I'd be like, go ahead and have a jacuzzi. <laughs> that's pretty awesome. Okay, so uh, what's our gift of the day? All right, guys, so our gift of the day, you might know this. It's a scene from Hot Tub Time Machine. This is what I had imagined that Rosen was doing with his hot tub in his dorm room before they made him get rid of it. Uh, hopefully, the, the UCLA Bruins will allow him to get that tub back in the room if he lets them go, what, 10-2, and two, and then takes them to a Pac-12 championship game, but they'd have to get by Utah and USC first. Um, but that's our episode. Don't forget to stalk us on Twitter, at Best Coast Show. You guys have a good night.